Hypothyroidism is a condition caused by the thyroid gland not producing enough thyroid hormones such as T3 and T4. But what are the causes of hypothyroidism? To understand the causes of hypothyroidism, it's important to first understand the hypothalamic pituitary thyroid axis. In the hypothalamus, there's a nucleus called the paraventricular nucleus, and this nucleus produces a hormone called thyrotropin-releasing hormone, or TRH. TRH can stimulate the anterior pituitary gland to produce thyroid-stimulating hormone, or TSH. TSH has receptors on the thyroid gland. TSH can stimulate the thyroid gland to produce thyroid hormones such as T3 and T4. T3 stands for triiodothyronine and T4 stands for thyroxin. T3 and T4 will cause negative feedback and inhibit the production of further T3 and T4 by suppressing the hypothalamic pituitary thyroid axis. Now let's think about hypothyroidism. Hypothyroidism is characterized by low levels of T3 and T4 being produced. It's important to note that low levels of T3 and T4 in the blood means that there will be less negative feedback on the axis. Hypothyroidism can be divided into primary, secondary, and tertiary hypothyroidism based on the level at which this axis is affected. Let's start with primary hypothyroidism, which refers to conditions which affects the thyroid gland's ability to produce thyroid hormones. It's important to realize that even though there are low levels of T3 and T4 in the blood, there is a compensatory increase in TSH production due to the loss of negative feedback on the axis. So primary hypothyroidism is characterized by low levels of free T3 and T4 and high levels of TSH. Let's now discuss the causes of primary hypothyroidism. The most common cause of primary hypothyroidism worldwide is iodine deficiency. The most common cause in the Western world is chronic autoimmune thyroiditis. This is also known as Hashimoto's thyroiditis. Another cause for primary hypothyroidism is called subacute granulomatous thyroiditis. This is also known as de Quervain's thyroiditis. Primary hypothyroidism can also occur after pregnancy and it's known as postpartum thyroiditis. There are also iatrogenic causes of primary hypothyroidism and some medications can also cause primary hypothyroidism. Finally, congenital hypothyroidism is another type of primary hypothyroidism. Let's now go through each type of primary hypothyroidism. Iodine deficiency is very common in countries where iodine is not fortified in food. Iodide is used by the thyroid gland to make T3 and T4. In iodine deficiency, there is less iodide available for the thyroid gland to make T3 and T4, which leads to primary hypothyroidism. In response to try and produce more T3 and T4, the thyroid gland will hypertrophy, and this can lead to an endemic goiter. Chronic autoimmune thyroiditis is also known as Hashimoto's thyroiditis, and it's characterized by autoimmune destruction of the thyroid gland. This happens because there are autoantibodies being targeted against the thyroid gland, and the main autoantibodies identified are anti-thyroid peroxidase antibodies, or anti-TPO antibodies, and anti-thyroglobulin antibodies, or anti-TG antibodies. Some patients are also positive for TSH receptor antibodies. An important point to learn is that patients with chronic autoimmune thyroiditis have a strong genetic association with the HLA-DR3 genotype. Initially, the damage will lead to rupture of the follicular cells of the thyroid gland, and this can lead to T3 and T4 getting spilled out into the blood and lead to a transient hyperthyroidism. But as the thyroid gland starts to get destroyed, the function of the thyroid gland will start to decrease, and this will lead to chronic hypothyroidism. Chronic autoimmune thyroiditis can lead to a painless goiter, but it's important to note that many patients will not have a goiter because the thyroid gland will atrophy. Patients with chronic autoimmune thyroiditis have an increased risk of developing non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, such as B-cell lymphoma. Chronic autoimmune thyroiditis mainly affects women compared to men, just like many other autoimmune conditions. Subacute granulomatous thyroiditis is also known as de Quervain's thyroiditis. It is a self-limiting disease that usually occurs due to a viral infection, such as a respiratory tract infection. The initial damage can lead to follicular rupture, which can lead to a transient hyperthyroidism, which can also lead to hypothyroidism. But as this condition is self-limiting, usually patients will return back to normal thyroid function. This is an example of an inflammatory condition, and it will lead to an inflamed, painful thyroid, which differentiates it from many other thyroid disorders. Patients may also have flu-like symptoms, and on labs, there will be an increased ESR due to the inflammation. Postpartum thyroiditis is also a self-limiting disease that can happen up to one year after a pregnant woman has delivered her baby.
Patients can present with transient hyperthyroidism or hypothyroidism or hyperthyroidism that leads to hypothyroidism, but most women will have normal thyroid function after resolution of these symptoms. If a patient develops a goiter, it is usually painless. There are also iatrogenic causes of primary hypothyroidism. Primary hypothyroidism can occur due to treatment of hyperthyroidism or a thyroid neoplasm. Patients can be treated by radiation or radioiodine therapy, and these therapies can damage functional thyroid tissue and cause hypothyroidism. Patients can also be treated with a thyroidectomy, which involves removing the thyroid gland. Patients can have a total thyroidectomy, which involves removing the whole thyroid gland, and patients can develop hypothyroidism a couple of weeks after the surgery. Patients can also have a subtotal thyroidectomy, which involves removing only part of the thyroid gland, and patients can develop hypothyroidism a couple of months or years after the surgery. Medications can also cause hypothyroidism. Antithyroid medications such as carbimazole or propylthiouracil will lower the thyroid hormone levels and it can lead to hypothyroidism. Lithium can cause hypothyroidism by interfering with the synthesis of thyroid hormones. Amiodarone can also cause hypothyroidism by what's called the wolf chaikoff effect, which we will now discuss. The wolf chaikoff effect is an autoregulatory phenomenon in the thyroid gland. Normally, iodide is converted by the thyroid gland into T3 and T4. When there is excess iodide in the body, the thyroid gland will downregulate the production of T3 and T4 and basically act like a brake. This is done to prevent the excessive production of thyroid hormones. So the wolf chaikoff effect can lead to hypothyroidism. Patients can develop excess iodide in the body due to amiodarone because amiodarone contains a lot of iodine. Patients can also develop excess iodide in the body if they have radio contrast agents because they contain a lot of iodine as well. Normally, patients who have good thyroid function will be able to adapt to the excess iodide in the body and be able to escape from the wolf chaikoff effect. The big problem is in patients who have underlying thyroid disease because the wolf chaikoff effect is much more pronounced in these patients and these patients have a reduced ability to escape from it. So these patients are more likely to develop hypothyroidism. Congenital hypothyroidism is where babies are born with severe hypothyroidism. There are many causes linked with this disease. One of the causes is thyroid agenesis, where the thyroid gland does not form at all. Another cause is antibody-mediated maternal hypothyroidism, which is where maternal antibodies attacks the baby's thyroid gland. Other causes include iodine deficiency and dyshormogenesis, where the thyroid gland does not have the enzymes to make thyroid hormones, such as thyroid peroxidase enzymes. Babies are screened for congenital hypothyroidism. This is really important because many babies do not have any symptoms at the time of birth because the placenta provides maternal thyroid hormones to the fetus. So newborn screening is really important even in babies who have no symptoms at the time of birth. You can remember the symptoms of severe congenital hypothyroidism with the six Ps. Babies look very pale and they also have a very puffy face. Babies can also look pot-bellied. They can also have a protruding umbilicus due to an umbilical hernia. They can have a protuberant tongue, as well as very poor brain development. So we've discussed the main causes of primary hypothyroidism. Let's now discuss secondary hypothyroidism and how it leads to less T3 and T4 being produced. Secondary hypothyroidism refers to conditions that affect the anterior pituitary gland. If the anterior pituitary gland does not produce as much TSH, that means that there will be less stimulation of the thyroid gland to produce thyroid hormones. So secondary hypothyroidism is characterized by low levels of free T3 and T4 and an inappropriately normal or low TSH level. Let's now discuss the causes of secondary hypothyroidism. Causes of secondary hypothyroidism includes a pituitary adenoma that is leading to hypopituitarism. Pituitary resection and radiation can also lead to secondary hypothyroidism. Sheehan syndrome is another important cause of secondary hypothyroidism. Sheehan syndrome is where there is severe postpartum hemorrhage which is leading to heavy blood loss and hypovolemic shock that can lead to ischemic necrosis of the pituitary gland. Infiltrative disorders such as hemochromatosis, sarcoidosis and amyloidosis can also lead to secondary hypothyroidism. Pituitary apoplexy is another cause of secondary hypothyroidism. Let's now discuss tertiary hypothyroidism and how it leads to less T3 and T4 being produced. Tertiary hypothyroidism refers to hypothalamic lesions. If the hypothalamus doesn't make TRH, that means that the anterior pituitary gland will not make TSH. 
This will mean that there will not be stimulation of the thyroid gland to make T3 and T4, and this will lead to hypothyroidism. Tertiary hypothyroidism is characterized by low levels of free T3 and T4, low levels of TSH, and low levels of TRH. Tertiary hypothyroidism is a very rare cause of hypothyroidism.